a look into public policy creation, the garbage can and iron triangle models by Kelly Lazar. This presentation will go over two different forms of policy models, the garbage can model and the iron triangle model. The discussion on the garbage can model includes its definition, how it is formed, how policies are formed under this model, the policies that are a result of the garbage can model, and also how the garbage can model can be related to the response of the government from the 9-11 attacks. Following the discussion on the garbage can model is the iron triangle model. Included in this discussion is its definition, who forms the iron triangle, how policies are created, and the results of this model. Before our discussion begins, it's important to understand what a policy model is. A policy model is a way to explain how policies and laws are created, and it can also be called a policy subsystem. While there are many different types of models, only garbage can and iron triangle models will be discussed in this presentation. Usually, there are five general steps involved in order for a policy to become passed. These steps include problem identification, agenda setting, policy formation, policy implementation, and policy evaluation. What is the garbage can model? Well, the garbage can model is a type of policy formation that can be considered sloppy and thrown together. Many different items are thrown together into the creation of a policy without coordination or much planning. As the title garbage can would suggest, everything is thrown in together and everything comes out just as big a mess as it went in. The garbage can model was created by Michael Cohen, James Marge, and Johan Olson in 1972. They wrote about it in A Garbage Can Model of Organizational Choice. This writing explained how policy making is really a process of organized anarchies and the result of three different factors. These factors were problematic preferences, unclear technology, and fluid participation. Problematic preferences refer to the people that are involved in the policy making. Everyone involved has their own thoughts and ideas on what should happen and how it should happen, and people are often unable to clearly explain what they desire and what they want to see happen. So whenever they do communicate what they want, it ends up not coming through as clear and it can end up muddled. Unclear technology doesn't refer to technology itself. It refers to the process and the people involved. Um, the processes operate by trial and error and they learn from their past mistakes. The people involved in passing the policies, when they're learning from their past mistakes, they're, they've learned what hasn't worked before. So they're able to take that and translate it into this new policy, but they're still not sure of how this new policy will actually work once it's been implemented. Fluid participation refers to the people that are actually involved in the policy making as well. These people, they're able to put in different times of amount and energy into the process. If one person is more committed to the cause behind the policy, they're gonna put in more effort and more participation than the person next to them who doesn't believe the policy is that important. Because of all these varying opinions on the subject, the policy itself may not be very consistent. Regardless of which policy model is being looked at, the five general steps for a policy to be passed remain the same. Problem identification is the first step in this process. During this step, there's been an identified issue, and this issue has been brought to the attention of the people that are in charge of making policies. Once those in charge have been made aware of the issue, they can put the issue on the agenda. Agenda setting is the second step in this process. Whenever they're setting the issue to the agenda, they decide how important it is and when they will deal with it. Once the problem's been placed on the agenda and it's time to deal with the problem, then the policy can be formed. This is where you see the garbage can model come into play because everyone that's involved in creating the policy, they have their own ideas on what should happen, when it should happen, and how it should happen. So you have all these ideas coming 
together from every different viewpoint on the subject. When all these different views come together and they're all used on the creation of one single policy, they can be very unclear and conflicting even at times. With so many ideas on the process, they try to use a little bit from each one to create the perfect policy. And unfortunately, that's not what happens. The policy itself is hard to understand, it's vague, and has many other issues around it. Once the policy has been created, it's time to put the plan into action. Usually the policy that was passed contains bits and pieces of everyone's thoughts, so it could actually get through the committee and be passed. After the policy has been in place for a while, then they can go back and evaluate it. They decide if the policy has been effective at dealing with the issue that they were assigned to deal with. Usually underneath the garbage can model, this is where they see just how ineffective and muddled and unclear their policy actually was. When you look at policies that are the result of the garbage can model, it's easy to see how they got their name. These policies are often difficult to understand and they have such a wide interpretation that the interpretation is left up to the bureaucracies or judicial branches to decide just what this policy actually meant. Again, these policies are very broad and they're vague and sometimes they give the appearance of acting on the subject while they don't actually get anything done. The garbage can model also doesn't really give us a specifics on how exactly the policy is formed, which is where the next model comes into play. Before iron triangles are discussed though, it's important to look at how the garbage can model can be used to describe the response of the government to the 9-11 attacks. The major policy response we saw from 9-11 was the passing of the Patriot Act. It only took 45 days for this act to be written, passed, and enacted. And it covers a wide range of areas mm -hmm. and security issues like money laundering. It increased the investigation powers of federal law enforcement and state law enforcement, and also changed a lot of the privacy laws and communication laws. The act itself was very broad and very vague on its wording, and the government was left to interpret what was meant by it. And this caused a lot of problems, and there were a lot of court cases over everything. One example was the ACLU versus Clapper, which actually resulted in the Supreme Court telling the NSA, which is the National Security Agency, that they cannot collect metadata from citizens' cell phones. The act itself is so broad that it can't be completely covered in this presentation. So if more information is wanted on it, I suggest that you do some research on your own into just what all was in this act. It's safe to say that the garbage can model does accurately describe the government's response to 9-11. The Patriot Act was passed incredibly fast. In fact, it took less than two months for it to be written, passed, and enacted. And the act itself, it created a plan, but it didn't create a method on how to carry out this plan. In fact, the Department of Homeland Security, which has headed our response didn't even form until a year later. Everyone was so concerned with doing something and passing something that they didn't put much thought into the repercussions of what they were passing. And by covering so many things all at once, they felt like they were covering their bases. But without having clearly defined limits, and clearly defined powers, they just opened the door for failure. 
Maybe they didn't open the door to failure per se, but they definitely opened up the door and gave the court systems a major headache to deal with on trying to sort out what all this legislation actually meant. The Iron Triangle model is the second type of policy models. This policy model states that policies are created by three main players or points of power. And it also shows that not everyone involved shares equal authority on policy making. This varies greatly from the garbage can model where everyone had a voice and everyone got to have a say in how the policy was created. In this method, only these three points have the main influence over the policy. The Iron Triangle model can also be called many other names, including policy whirlpools, cozy little triangles, triple alliances, and power triads. The three main players or points of power in the Iron Triangle are executive bureaus, congressional committees, and interest groups. Even though issues can be brought to the attention of policymakers by the public media or the president, they're not considered the main power players in these triangles. Executive bureaus are the groups that deal with the issue every day. These people are affected by whatever the problem may be, so they feel the need to bring this to someone's intention. Congressional committees are the groups that actually control what bills go to the full Congress. They're able to gather information on the subject, and they actually create the policy that is discussed and voted on by the Congress. And then interest groups are groups of people that have joined together for an issue or a problem, and together they have the time, money, and power to actually influence the committees in the way that they want. These people can be part of the executive bro, or they can be outside of that as well. As was mentioned earlier, the five general steps don't change much, but under the Iron Triangle model, you can see how these groups in this model play in every step. During problem identification, the executive bro is dealing with a problem and they are able to gather people within their group and outside the organization that are sympathetic towards them. This creates an interest group. The interest group will then bring the issue to the attention of a congressman who supports their cause. They can also bring it to the attention of the media and other people, and this is how they are able to gain more power and more influence. Once the interest group has brought the attention of a congressman to their issue, the congressman then uses the guidance of the interest group to push their issue with Congress. Once the issue has been pushed enough, Congress then will decide to set it to the agenda. Once it's on the agenda, then the issue will be sent to a committee group for discussion. This congressional committee group are the ones that actually form the policy and they go off guidance of the interest group. The interest group will tell them what they want and how they want it and the committee tries to pass the policy that follows their guidelines. Once a policy has been created that the interest group approves of and it's been passed, then it's time for the policy to be implemented. And this policy, policy should deal directly with the issue that the Bureau was fighting. Once the policy has been in place for a while, then it can be evaluated. If the policy was successful, that means the issue is no longer there and the interest group no longer has a cause to be centered around and they can disband. However, if this policy didn't take care of the issue, then the group can reapproach the policymaker they had and the process will start all over again. Policies that are passed as a result of the Iron Triangle model usually reflect the goals of the interest groups that were supporting them. These policies are more for focused than the ones that are formed underneath the garbage can model. But 
this model also doesn't take into consideration the influences on policies that are outside of the triangle. This includes the public opinion and news media, social media, sources like that. In review, there are many different types of policy models and there are five general steps regardless of the policy model that is used to pass a policy. The garbage can model describes how many ideas are thrown together and they create a messy, vague policy that deals with an issue. And this method can also be used to describe how the government responded to the 9-11 attacks. The Iron Triangle model was another form of policy formation, and it described how policies are formed by three key players, executive bureaus, congressional committees, and interest groups. However, it doesn't take into consideration any outside influences. This concludes my presentation on policy models. Thank you.